Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so the last bit I want to do in the functions is 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 basically the transformations that can take place of a function. Okay, and I want to take you through some of this terminology so that at least you would recognize it if it came up in an exam. Okay, now it's not the end of the day if you haven't it done before or um, or or you've forgotten it or whatever, okay, because you can work it out on your calculator. Okay, so to give you an example um, of the type of question that this handles, okay? So draw the graphs of f of x equal to x squared, g of x equals to x minus 2 squared, h of x equal to x plus 4 all to be squared. Describe the transformations that map f of x to g of x. So in other words, what's the relationship between them two? And then f of x to h of x. OK, now why I say it's not the end of the world if you haven't this done very well or forgotten it or, or whatever, is that you can always use your calculator and use the tables function and plot f of x equal to x squared, plot g of x equal to x minus 2 ought to be squared and plot this and then graph them and see what happens. OK, so there's no issue at all with that. The descriptions might be a tiny bit harder, um, but you might be able to see it, you, you will be able to see it on the graph. Okay, however, if you're familiar with this table, it does make these questions just that little bit easier. Okay, so remember our function on the last example that I gave you, and we will do that one now in a minute. Um, f of x is equal to x squared. We're going to use that as our, as our f of x uh, to help us explain these, these functions here. OK, so if I had then um, f of x equal to x squared plus 3, for example. OK, what that would do is I'm going to draw the f of x graph here. OK, um, so that's my f of x equal to x squared. So what f of x or equal f of x plus three, which is what we have here. OK, so let me write that down here properly. Yeah. OK. What it does is it takes this graph here and it moves it up by C units. OK, so this is zero. F of X plus three would then sit up here where every point moves up by three units. OK, um, so it shifts F of X up by C units. OK, now what is the difference between that and, and it's squared in this case, just because I have a squared function here. OK, does that not shift it up by three units? Well, no. So when it's inside the brackets, it shifts it the opposite way to what you think. So the plus three, not this way, but in fact, it shifts it back to the left by three units. OK, so f of x plus three, I'm going to draw in green. OK, and you know now my drawing's not the best. OK, but it shifts it to the left by three units. And in the same way, if I had f of x minus three, or to be squared, it would shift it to the right by three units. If I had f of x minus three, not in the brackets, the brackets are closed, it would shift it down by three units. 
Okay, so if it's within the brackets, it shifts it left and right, okay, or shifts it um, horizontally, okay, inside the brackets. And if it's inside the brackets, it goes the opposite way to the sign. If it's outside the brackets, so just a plus or a minus number onto f of x, it shifts it up or down, okay, or vertically, okay, and it will shift it in the direction of the sign. Okay, so that is graph transformations, shifting up and down. Okay, right. Down the bottom then we have stretching and compression. So when you multiply a function by a number on the outside as such, okay, it also affects the graph vertically and horizontally. So if it's a whole number by f of x, okay, it will be stretched vertically, okay? If it's one over C, it'll be compressed or it'll get smaller, okay? Because it's a fraction. It's a fraction of the original um, graph, okay? So in other words, if your, y, your output was 10 and we had one over two here, well, then your output would be compressed to five, okay? So shrunk down. Now, and again, if it's inside the brackets, okay, then it's horizontally that it gets affected, okay? And again, it's the opposite to what you would expect. So when it's a CX, it's a compression. When it's over C, it's a stretching or it gets bigger. Okay, so I like that table because it's a summary of all of the graph transformations that you could get asked. These ones up here gets asked much, much more than these ever do. Okay, and remember these transformations. Yes, I'm doing them here as part of functions, but they also apply to uh, complex numbers and your Cartesian plane. Okay, so remember them for that chapter too. So now I want you to have a try at this particular question, I want you to plot all three. And then I want you to, to know how to describe f of x to g of x and f of x to h of x, okay? So you can do this one in your own time. I, I, I'm not gonna record the solution, but the type of, of explanation you need for the transformation that occurs from f to g, what they are looking for there is a shift to the right by two units, okay? Or you can say a shift horizontally by two units, okay? Um, but that's what they're looking for. And then from F to H, it'll be a shift to the left of four units or shift horizontally by minus four, if you want to do it that way, or anything that tells you that you know that once it's inside the brackets, it's shifting left and right. Okay, so try that one if you wish and, and, and convince yourself that it's true. If you're going to do it, I would also suggest that you do um, F, of 2x squared and f of a half x squared. Okay, just so that you can see um, the stretching and compression by the factor, okay? I wouldn't worry too much on the vertically, but the horizontal ones, it's, it's, it's better to be able to see them. Okay, and then that's that transformations done as well. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.